So in my last video, I showed you how to make sambal tumis and if you're wondering what you can use the sambal tumis in, um, you can use it in tai tao kui, which is fried carrot cake that we love in Singapore. We start off by making the kui. So you want to combine daikon, otherwise known as Asian radish, in a pot with some water. You want to take the weight of the pot and its contents and note that down before heating this until it boils. So once it boils, cover the pot and lower the heat so that it's just simmering. And you just want to cook the radish until it's tender. So once that is done, you want to let the pot and its contents cool slightly before taking its weight again. You want the mixture to be just 100 grams less than what you started off with. So either add more water or take out some water. So now strain the contents of the pot into a wok. Uh, you can also use a large saucepan. So to the daikon liquid in the wok, you're going to add some corn flour, some wheat starch, as well as some rice flour. You're also going to add oil and some salt and also a bit more water. So stir all of this together. You want it to be fairly homogenous before you start cooking it so that uh, there wouldn't be lumps of flour here and there. So once that is mostly smooth, set that on the stove and you want to stir this mixture constantly because you don't want uneven lumps to appear. So what you're looking for is for it to thicken to almost like a gloopy texture before adding your cooked daikon. So now that the cooked daikon is in, you want to continue cooking it and the desired texture is something that kind of holds its shape but it's still easy to spread out in your pan. So once it is the right consistency, transfer the mixture into a dish. So I'm using a rectangular glass dish here. You don't have to oil the sides or the bottom of the pan because the mixture already has oil in it and that prevents it from sticking to whatever dish you're using. So you just want to smooth it out, smooth the top out until it's smooth. And then we're going to steam this mixture for about half an hour or 35 minutes. So I like to test it by poking a satay stick um, onto the kui. So allow this to set in your fridge overnight. And the next day, simply remove the kui from your dish. So what you get is quite a firm but still wobbly kui. And now we're going to slice it into cubes. You don't have to be too fussy about how perfect the cubes look because it is, you know, the irregularity that makes Thai Tao Kui so enjoyable. I also know that some hawkers actually use their hands to mash up the Kui. But I'm going for a more cube kind of approach. So the idea with the fried carrot cake is to fry it in batches. So, you know, just to gauge how much Kui to fry each time, I like to spread um, you know enough carrot cake to cover the base of the of the pan that you're using and it should fit in one single layer um, the other thing that you need are some eggs so you just want to break about two eggs for every half batch of this carrot cake that you steamed um, if you want to be more generous you can do three as well you just want to beat it roughly other things that you'll need are some chopped garlic you also need tai po. So this is preserved radish and it comes in two varieties. So you can see the sweet version here as well as the salty version. So for the salty version, you want to soak it in water just for about two minutes because it can be quite salty and then you want to drain it after. So in terms of the fat that I'm using, I'm using lard, but feel free to use a regular cooking oil like vegetable oil. Um, lard is just a more traditional option and I do know that some hawkers do render their own lard with a pandan leaf or two just for added flavour. So once the lard is melted, add your carrot cake and you just want to spread it out until it's a thin layer. So I feel that the way you fry um, fried carrot cake is also down to personal preference. So I'm going to show you two different ways. So for the first batch, I'm making the kui a little bit more fine. So I'm mashing it up further in the pan until it's quite broken up. 
you want to get some color on the gui at this point and then just make a well in the center and that's where we're gonna add our garlic as well as our tai po. So continue frying that until it's fragrant and then toss it with the rest of the carrot cake. So now you can add your beaten eggs. And what I've seen hawkers doing is that they'll immediately stir that in um, with the carrot cake until it's semi-cooked, kind of like scrambled eggs. And then they'll flatten the mixture into a, a single layer and allow that to set further. So after a few minutes, you can use your wooden spatula to break up the carrot cake and eggs into squares or rectangles. So the idea is to flip the carrot cake once you feel that there is good browning on the bottom. So this way, it, you know, it really gives almost like a crispy texture and a really nice layer of flavour in your cai tao kui. So to season the carrot cake, you want to add a little bit of fish sauce. Um, and then remember the sambal tumis that I made in the last video. I'm using it here to flavor the Thai Tao Kui. And I feel that sambal tumis really adds so much flavor to this dish. And so I feel that it's imperative that you either make your own or find a good jarred version that you like. So if you like the white version of carrot cake, you can stop here. But if you like the black one like I do, then you can drizzle it with ketchup manis or Chinese sweet soy sauce. So this adds sweetness to the dish, but it's not enough for your dish to become as dark as what you get at the hawker centers. So I would add a little bit of dark soy sauce as well. So dish that up and add some spring onions. I feel that hawkers tend to go a bit chunky on the spring onions and add some sambal on the side to enjoy. So I'll show you a second way to make fried carrot cake at home and this is Wax's preference. So for Wax, he really enjoys bigger chunks of carrot cake. Um, so I wouldn't mash the version I'm cooking for him as much. So I'll leave most of the chunks whole. And then I'll make a hole in the center just as before to fry the garlic and the typo. So we can stir everything together once it's fragrant. So for the eggs, Wax actually likes eating big clumps of egg. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing all the carrot cake to one side and I'm adding the eggs on the other side. And we're just going to kind of scramble the eggs until they are semi-cooked. And then I'll toss it together with the rest of the carrot cake. The idea is that you don't want the eggs to be fully cooked before stirring it in with the kui. Because you also want to spread it out in a thin layer in the pan for it to set. So same thing, cut the carrot cake and egg mixture into rectangles or squares and then you can flip it once it's brown. And then add your sambal tumis. This time I'm doing a hei pai version which is a black and white version. So you want to season this with fish sauce to your taste. Uh, something I forgot to mention is that, you know, just keep in mind that the typo that you are using is salty, so don't go crazy on the fish sauce. So I'm scooping half of the white mixture out of the pan. With the remaining carrot cake mixture in the pan, I'm adding ketchup manis and dark soy sauce as I did before. So you can dish up the white and the black cai tao kui on the same dish, just as how the hawkers do in Singapore. Top the mixture with some spring onion and some sambal tumis and you're good to go. For some reason, I feel that people always cannot believe that you can make cai tao kui at home. But it actually is really doable as long as you take it step by step. And you know, it's a dish that you can really customize to your own preference. 